I'm not sure if it's a bit wonky, you know, I think it's a bit lower this side. Just trying to put this bracket on the top there for the aerials. Yeah, we'll have to adjust it, otherwise it might go round in circles. So the seed socks going on the pallet as well. Remember them wheels we put on the brush? They didn't work. They weren't strong enough in the middle. They weren't meant for it. They were rollers off, off a conveyor belt or something like that. But we thought they would have done. So uh, back to the drawing board on that one. Sam the second, or Sam two, is uh, having a go on the digger. He has driven little ones before, but he's going to have a go on the big one. Now the chip is running. Most asked question yesterday is why has other Sam left? But basically he had an hour commute every day and a job come up around the corner from his house, seven minutes from his house, driving Merlots and a fast track for a big uh, tree uh, arboriculturist com company. And also it was good money, so that is why I think he was in six years or, or he was into his sixth year anyway. So little Sam wanted a friendship, so he's here. So it was, we were wondering how we were going to manage with the two Sams, but anyway, it's quite easy now because there's only one Sam. There's still two Andrews though. But that's easy because we call one Andy and we call one Andrew. Quiz time. Where's the battery on here? We have to just follow the cables until we find some a meaty cable. There's the alternator. Must be not far from that. Oh, this was yesterday's quiz question. It is, in fact, a K and N uh, filter. So you put it on your car and it gives you an extra 10 horsepower. Or you put it on your MV track and it looks cool. These tables prove quite useful for pallet wrapping seed socks because you can walk all the way around them. And Andy's also said that when he takes engines out of cars, he could drop them, drop them on it, and then lift the car up on the ramp out the way, and the engine stays in the right place. Hey! It's email for it. Did you put the SIM card in it? No. Just gonna put the SIM card in here now. There you go, you've got a combine on there. Now. There we go. <laughs> You not change that to a little mower, no. no. <laughs> so is it ready to go? Uh, so oh, you got to put the dimensions in now. It's registered at SIM card. Right. Uh, yeah. Just putting all the dimensions in now, and it's confused because it thinks it's a small combine because <laughs> it's rear steer, like a combine would be. It's a good job the screen's waterproof. Ellie's just calibrating it now. That's a straight line. We've got some straight lines up and down the yard now. Just going to test it now and see if it works. See if it's got all the reactivity settings correct. It's at 17. Oh, I see you've got a harvest to tell where the antenna is. I go 16, so there's a bit of a gap up there. Just unloading a pallet, well, IBC of liquid manganese. So we're going to be putting some of this on the ball in the wheat. So you see it says foliar MN15. That means 15% of that is manganese. So that's what helps plants grow. The cats have just dropped it off. Right, we think it's all calibrated now. Next to it now, he's going to put past it flat out. Right, so we press that now, I think. There we go. Did it work? Yeah, I think it did. If it works in the barn as well. No, it doesn't. It's gone west. Lost signal inside, I think. Right, we're in the field now, and we've got it on the line. So we'll see what it looks like in a minute when we go back up. The sheep are a little bit confused. We're not actually really mowing anything because the grass is so short, but we'll be able to see off the wheel marks anyway, I think. Knocking the 
muck about with the odd wispy bit of grass, I suppose. Looks pretty straight. Getting it down there now. So what's that, the instruction manual? Yeah. No, it's product yeah. placement, it's just go. a piece of paper. <laughs> if anyone wants it, give him a ring. I got the pigeons up a jet. Sam the second's done quite a bit of chipping. Andrew's just on the shovel now, stockpiling it up. We just took it down for diesel and had blue. It's actually on its way back now. get it set back up there then get the digger pulling off this corner try and make a bit of room we didn't chip for a few weeks because the digger was at the other farm so now it's a chance to have a good catch up and blast this through the flood is still there not going down at all at the moment so that's because it keeps falling from the sky this stuff called rain so with it being wet today we've obviously set this mower up with the rtk stuff on so george from rtk network came up with a sim card and with elliot and we from what is it, FJ Dynamo? Well, no, it's not, it's ERH, which is his initials, came up to set it up for us, and it's working mint. There's a steering angle sensor that can go on the rear axle, but we found it actually doesn't need it. But the best thing is about it is the SIM card that lives in that, that gives this the RTK signal, we can have another SIM card off these guys that uses the same login details. So as long as we're not using the mower and the 936 at the same time, we can have RTK on the 936. So the 936 came with all the equipment in it, but we didn't want to pay a subscription. But now the subscription that's kind of coming with this screen can be used in the fence, but without having to keep taking the thing out and swapping the SIM cards around, we can just have the same the SIM card off RTK, but with the same login details. So we've got one login to use one machine at RTK. So as long as we don't want to mow grass with this, at the same time we can use it and we don't have to mess around does that make sense i feel like i've just made that sound really confusing but I just, to me it's brilliant because it just means that we've got two machines running rtk now well we've got four actually because the other two tractors are already on it but the subscription each year is not a lot so that's really good so if anyone needs wants to do that the other thing is as well with rtk network is it works anywhere. You don't have to keep putting codes into link to base stations. It just does it all through the SIM card and then uses the base station radios. So if anyone wants to like take the taxes that are running sort of Trimble and they're paying for a signal or, or whoever or Topcon or something, you can put one of their SIM cards in and it'll work with it. And then obviously this system fits really neatly on the mower and it came with all the different adapters and there's still loads left. So if we want to put it on the 7710 or any of the other classic tractors, we can make them rtk ready so works really good the only thing is is we have to get the screen quite close because you turn it on and off with the screen at the moment but there is a bluetooth button coming that you'll then probably put on the steering wheel or on the joystick but it's just not here yet but otherwise it's gone on pretty easily you know we were just messing around a bit yesterday afternoon doing it put this bracket up this morning we had to because it's square tube and not round we did have to make a little bit of metal up here but fits on well we've managed to hide most of the wiring behind this panel Andrew made that, we're not paying it yet, it's still razor sharp for cutting hedges at the same time. But that needs smoothing off and something around it. And the screens, a lot of people did ask, is it waterproof? Yeah, it's, is it IP65 they call it? So it's sort of like water resistant. You won't want to pressure washer it, but it is waterproof. So, works well. Someone said as well, why are you putting on the mower? Well, the main thing is, is when we make the sunflower maze, we can see exactly where we are in the field so that we don't end up with one path merging to another path. Or if we want to do a complete pattern and design, we can draw it on the screen as we're going rather than trying to like stand up because it's really disorientating driving through sunflowers this high. When you're sat down here, you just get like totally lost. And also we can make little pretty stripes in grass, do diamond pattern if we want. So makes it more efficient when the mower is only one and a half meters wide. You want to make sure you're mowing one and a half meters every pass. Whereas normally you, you kind of like, oh, I don't want to miss a bit. So you end up like driving at 1.2. Suddenly that adds up the fact that you're only using sort of 75, 80% of the mower instead of all of it. And it just makes it a bit easier. You can do videos then on your phone because it's steering itself. So really pleased with how it's working today considering it was raining. And um, 
we'll see what it's like. We'll get some nice stripes in the fields when, when it's not. Better just say, because they've been so good, coming and setting it all up for us as well. Um, I'll put a link below to, to the website and the RTK Networks website as well under this video. So if you want to get in touch with them, if you've got GPS and want to use their SIM cards, or if you've got an old tractor that you want to put this on, because it's about, it's under five grand. It's, it's, it's cheap to make a tractor RTK. So I'll leave the links underneath the videos if you want to get in touch with them. Yeah, so I'm quite excited that we can make this RTK. And also when we're draining, we can put the drains in dead straight and record them so we know where they are so we can go back to them. We put the drainer on last week or the week before and got it all ready because it's predicted to be a dry week. Since we put it on, it's pretty much rain. So I'm debating dropping the drainer back off again. Anyway, this is some of the wheat that's left in the shed at the moment. I sold another three load today, which is sort of 87 ton for 270 pound a ton. It's absolutely mental. Great for arable farmers. Not so good if you're buying sheep food or cattle food or things like that. But I'm apparently I'm one of only 10 or 15% of farmers that have still got quite a bit of grain, still unpriced, which makes a nice change to get the markets right for once. Um, but it also tells me as well that if there's not a lot of farms with stuff to price, I really should hold back selling because they're going to have to start offering more to get the grain off farms. And I know they could bring a boatload from Australia, but that takes a bit of logistics, it takes a bit of insurance as well at the moment. And then there's other people in the world that need it because Ukraine didn't just feed quite a bit of Europe. It also fed other things as well. Uh, sorry, other countries as well. We have had a delivery of hats. We've got some prototypes as well. And the teal ones are back in and then also there was supposed to be a random one. So yeah, they'll be on the website later, hopefully, if you if anyone was wanting a warm hat while it's still cold. It's gonna be zero next week as well. Quickly do the birthday bumper. I'll try and do it a little bit slower because a couple of people have said I'd gone a bit fast and it was hard for them to read. But that is today's birthday bumper. Happy birthday to anyone that's that's not on there, but it is your birthday. I don't know about anyone else, but watching the news at the moment, it's just horrific. I mean, there was a little girl last night, she's three, and her mum was looking after her. She's got cancer, she can't get any more medication because of what's going on in the Ukraine, and she's sleeping in the bath because that's the only place that offers them sort of any sort of protection from the bombing and the blasts and stuff in, in Kyiv. It, it's just horrendous, the world at the moment, and I know I'm, we're a thousand miles away, but like I find it really hard for the last sort of week or so to to get motivated every day because of what's going on and I've I've had another day I've not done a lot today with the whole sort of aid through the border thing I've been waiting for the foreign office to email me because they had my email address from yesterday and apparently they were supposed to be doing something this am still not heard a thing chased a few people up that could chase them not heard back from them but obviously everyone's busy with lots of other things to do with what's going on out there but pff, I feel like 60 percent today I mean I'd Tell me how you all you guys are. I mean, is it affecting you as well? Although it's a thousand miles away because it's really affecting me. Sold a little bit of wheat. I'll, you could say I'd made a little bit of profit on it, but but in reality, the, the diesel I had delivered on Monday cost me 84, 86 pence a litre, I think. And then someone told me today that they've been quoted 95 and someone else 105 for fuel. So any sort of like little uplift in selling a bit of wheat is totally wiped out on the inflation on the fuel. And everyone that's got a car or a vehicle or truck or whatever, you're all paying them prices that have lifted as well. So it's a bit of a somber video. We've had a bit of a bit of fun putting that stuff on the mower as well today, but, but generally now, uh, let me know how you're feeling today. Everyone, you know, people are getting lazy. No one's commented, but yeah, let me know how you're feeling today and, and, and see and tell me the reason why, you know, you, you're feeling how you are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow and hopefully we might have a little bit better weather because bad weather doesn't help either, does it? So thanks and I'll see you tomorrow. Been editing, but news just in, so it's not the end of the video yet. This is what John's just sent me, but he needs some volunteers to help sort this stuff out. So basically now we've, not kind of got the green light but it's been indicated that we're going to be able to get tin stuff out and hopefully baby milk and stuff like that so john could do with some people helping him at macarthur agriculture tomorrow so any young farmers around that area scunthorpe way get yourself down to macarthur agriculture tomorrow and give them a help sorting things out so they can get the wagons turned around and out as quickly as possible so here's what john's just sent hi guys uh quick update on what we are doing here so um 
Today's been a really busy day. Everybody's been absolutely flat out um, processing stuff in this side of the warehouse here. So we've been getting mixed uh, mixed collections in here, sorting them into these uh, into these bags on uh, on a Smeets Ferry lorry, and then we've got more stuff, further stuff over here as well, uh, which is also ready. We've got lots of kind of like warm winter coats, sleeping bags, stuff like that. So some really really useful stuff starting to come through, along with kind of like uh, the clothes and uh, some of the bits that we've maybe got a bit much of at the minute. Um, what we want to do is we want to kind of slightly adjust our um, aim in terms of what we want to bring in. What we need now and what we are able to export and move is tinned food. So what we'd like now is we'd like tinned food. Um, tinned food and um, also baby formula. That really wants to be our big push for tomorrow and for collections over the weekend is if we can bring in more of that um, with our haulage partners that we're working with now, we are able to move that um, across to the continent and get it in the hands of the right people. So uh, tinned food, baby formula is absolutely fantastic. If you do have access to uh, trauma medical supplies or general first aid um, equipment as well, that would be fantastic and that is also very, very welcome. Okay. Thanks very much and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.